Hey there guys, welcome to this video. A little short one about the latest project I made for the yearly Bitbird summer competition. And as you can see right here, it's the GC Pocket V2, or how I call it now, the GC to go. It's a Wii portable, as you might figure. And before we take a look at the actual device, um, let's take a quick look around what we got all around here on the table um, that yeah came to play in this project of course uh, first of all I trimmed the Wii motherboard um, as you can see this is the cutout it's a fairly small trim uh, with a NAND and AVE relocation um, if you want to know more about this or everything I say um, check out the links in the video description. I will put a link there for the work look and whatever you might want to know. Um, yeah, so the board looks something like this in the end. It's really, really small. Um, I have something to compare right now. Here's the Game Boy Color in comparison. So this is basically as big as the screen of the Game Boy Color. So that's the motherboard that's in there. Addition uh, to the motherboard come a few custom PCBs I made. This is the first project where I actually made custom PCBs. I made one for um, the bottom where everything connects to. Let's see if I can focus this. Probably not, no. Um, two boards for the actual buttons on each side. So the D-pad and the ABXY buttons. Um, every button has uh, two LEDs, which are special smart LEDs, SK6805 um, LEDs, which ca uh, can be yeah, controlled by a microcontroller. And this microcontroller sits on the main PCB, which is this one. Um, it includes a microcontroller. Um, that's programmed with the software I made. Um, I called it the NPC Nolds um, Portable Coprocessor. It's an SMT21 um, microcontroller. Um, also, we have the audio amp and the GC Plus controller, uh, controller, controller, whatever, on here. So basically, this is the main PCB which handles all kinds of stuff. Um, the MPC basically um, handles the color uh, configuration of the button LEDs and it's also able to control the display um, so you can control the display menu and set the brightness and stuff um, stuff like that. I can do even more because it's connected to the Wii motherboard using I2C so you can actually use um, the software on the Wii to control this microcontroller and make stuff, which is pretty neat, actually. And last but not least, we have this little boy here, which basically just has two USB-C connectors. And I used this to make this nice, nice little docking station here, um, which uses the same USB connector that the um, Nintendo Switch docking station uses and yeah you can just put in um, the GC to go in there and yeah it will charge using USB-C. Uh, what else do we got? You can see we got a few um, test prints here, different revisions of the case of course, um, the case is heavily inspired by my first GC Pocket, um, but I made it completely from scratch, so um, it looks kind of the same, of course, um, because they both have the same purpose, being as small as possible. Um, there was just not much I can do without um, changing the size, but it's a little bit thinner than than the the outside, um, the handles. Um, yeah, so I got rid of the handles, which was basically the main goal, and also all these buttons. And yeah, we'll see in a second how 
much better than new one is. Um, okay, so for the buttons, um, in the old one I used 3D printed buttons, which I just sanded. And this time I took another step, I printed buttons, um, sanded them and also um, used some primer and made some uh, molds. These are silicon molds, fairly easy to, to make. And yeah, I molded all these buttons using um, resin and some yeah some color additions. So I have different um, casts here, as you can see, slightly different shapes of purple <laughs> and also green. Um, basically, oh yeah, all the buttons are casted. As you can see, the shoulder buttons and these are the. Um, Z and Z2 and start and power button and here we have um, ABXY still inside of the mold so I didn't use these obviously but yeah once you have um, the resin and uh, made you will end up with much more than you need so you just make more buttons even though you don't really need them so this was um, another step I, may, I did, um, it worked very well. I did some casting in the, uh, in the past, so it was a straightforward process for me. Okay, I think we got everything covered that I got on my table right here. So let's check out the actual device. Um, yeah, I'm using 3DS um, sliders. Actually, these are the new 3DS sliders, which are a little bit different from the old ones. Basically, just um, the shape of the case. I don't know if I've got one lying around here. This is an old one. They are gray on the top, and the new ones are white on the top. And yeah, it's a little bit easier to integrate the new ones into a design since yeah the shape is a little bit more straightforward um, on the bottom we have a power button and the USB-C for charging and also accessing the internal memory uh, so we got 264 gigabytes of um, memory in here so no SD cards um, like I used in the old one yeah, the rest is pretty basic. You got a D-pad start button ABXY here on the front and a 3.5 IPS inch display. Um, I also added some tempered glass here. I got some um, custom made tempered glass. Okay, I can't show you right now. Um, which protects the screen and also makes flat. So it's a little bit better to use in the sun. On the top, of course, we have the shoulder buttons, which are dual tacked. Uh, we got a fan vent. This is the reset button, and the Z and Z2 button. The Z2 button can be used in um, RV loader in the future, hopefully. On the back, there's nothing special. There's just the fan vent with my logo on there. Um, the back is printed using carbon fill, so that's a very tough uh, material, it's very heat and um, yeah, stress resistant, physical. And on the front I used the Galaxy Purple from, from, from Prusa Mint, which is just a nice um, purplish color, indigo-like. I think it looks a little bit different on um, the camera, it looks very blue right now, but whatever. So, long story short, let's turn on this bad boy so you can see the NPC in all its glory. Um, it has a little boot up animation so you can see that every LED in the buttons can be controlled separately. And they look very bright right now, um, but they actually are not. So I basically just colored these bows in the original color. These bows are blue and these ones um, pinkish, yellowish. Yeah, and it's running uh, customized version of RV Loader and yeah of course it's fully functional uh, we can take a quick look 
into the settings um, where I in integrated an NPC uh, menu, which basically right now it just reads some values from the NPC controller using I2C. So it so shows like the LED count and the mode the LEDs are in. Um, so I didn't fully um, code all the options in right now, so you can't really change anything now. And also the display control is not implemented yet, but um, so far it's at least um, been detected and also working. Yeah, so what else do we got to say? We got to, um, let's go ahead and play some some games, I guess.